Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about color theory and how it will be pertain to you. A lot of things out there on color theory really aren't going to pertain to you. It has more to do with the fashion industry and how the fashion industry picks the colors for the coming years. Uh, the hot colors, the clothing, print, that has very little to do with what you're going to do with your art. Most of the things that I'm going to show you today on color theory are already within you. It's things that you've been learning since grade school. Here you have a simple color chart. It's divided up into three different sections, and I'm going to show you what they are. You have primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. Primary colors are onto themselves. You can't create them. They're there, they're from the rainbow. Yellow and red create orange, but nothing creates yellow. Yellow and blue create green, and you can't create blue. And blue and red create violet. And the colors of the rainbow, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, are the only colors in the rainbow. It's the way the light strikes it. But then it's further divided up, and those are called tertiary colors. So here you have um, orange and yellow, but there's a color in between that's formed by the blending of these two colors. And you have yellow-orange, red-orange, red-violet, blue-violet, blue-green, and yellow-green. Those are the third generation down, your tertiary colors. It could further be divided at going out and out and out and out. And that's really the basic, basic color theory. A hue is a color. That's all it is. So anytime you see the word hue, they're just saying another word for color. Three of the words that you need to know are tint, tone, and shade. Tint is whenever you mix a color with white. Shade is any time you mix a, a color with uh, black. And tone is whenever you mix a color with gray. Gray being the mixture of black and white. Color theory groups different colors that they know will um, look good together. And these groups are, are called color schemes, or sometimes they're called models. And I'm going to show you a couple of them that really work well. And these are really the only ones that are going to apply to you because after this, it gets very complicated. Complementary colors. Complementary colors are always opposite on the color chart. So here you see red and green purple and yellow, um, blue and orange. Normally when somebody chooses a complementary color, well, it's very holiday-like. It's very bright, vibrant, and it's very noticeable. Let's look at Christmas time. All your decorations go up, and the colors that associated red and green. But you ever notice how excited you were at the beginning of December? And at the end of December, which is a very short amount of time, you really want to put your red and green away. And that's what happens with complementary colors. Sometimes they're too much. You could take them in small batches. Now, this is the one you're going to use all the time. Analogous. Three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So here we have blue, green, and light green. You can use purple, blue. After complementary and analogous uh, color schemes, really you're looking at going into specifics. Uh, you have triadic where you pick um, a triangle on the color scheme. Split complementary tones down that feeling that you get a vibrancy. You use green with red violet and red orange. It doesn't give that much excitement to the picture. 
it's probably a safer bet to use than complimentary if you're creating art that's going to be on the wall. You may want to download one of these sheets, but really it's it's within you. Once you start working with these pencils, you're automatically going to go to your favorite combinations. When you see two colors that work really well together, and there are colors that will work very well together, versus some colors that won't. And now I'm going to get into some of like the rules, you know, Lori's givens. Models are simply color schemes. And you've heard of color schemes in decorating your house or picking paints that look good together. And that's as simple as it is. You're going to pick a model or a color scheme. Another way of dividing up the color wheel is between warms and cool colors. And this will play a very important part in choosing color. Here you have the cool colors. You have green, blue, violet, and into violet red. Those are your cool colors. You think of those as your winter colors. And if you ever get confused, think of ice, blue ice. Those are gonna make a calming effect. If you want to think of the blue sky, it's calming. If you're sitting there on a cloudy day and you're in a meadow, think of what it's like to be in that type of situation. And those would be your cooler colors. The warm, vibrant, bright, energetic, hot, fire, sun would be over here on this side and where you have your yellow, your yellow, orange, orange, red, red, orange, and into the um, red, violet. Another thing that you're going to need to know, and this question comes up everywhere that I see, what about your gray? What do you do with your gray colors? And there's three options. You've got your cool grays, your warm grays, or cool grays you would use with your cool colors. Your warm grays you'll use with your warm colors. It's pretty um, explanatory in itself. But then you have your French grays. And that's where it gets into another model. And those are your nature colors. Your nature colors would be your earth tones, your beiges, your browns. Uh, think of the color of mushroom. That would be what you would call your, your nature colors. They're more on the cooler side. They're calming. There's nothing that in them that bring on any sort of excitement. French grays came from, well, obviously France. And they often use them in their color schemes in decorative uh, their paints, they use them a lot with their trim. So they were kind of named after them. And those are the colors that you would use with your earth tones. So it's pretty much explanatory. If you, you do anything about um, home decor, if you look up anything on French home decor, you'll see a lot of the earthy gray, French gray. The last thing I want to talk to you about are the browns. In creating brown, you mix your primary colors together and it will create brown. You can mix your secondary colors and they will be brown. Brown is created by just about everything. But there is a problem with brown. It doesn't mean it's a pretty brown. So in general, I don't try to create brown at all. I use the Prisma colors that are provided to me to create those are the colors that I know were mixed by professionals and they are the color browns that work for me to say I want to mix my own brown up I would have to be doing a painting because then it's much easier to maybe discard what doesn't work there are certain colors that mix together that will make a pleasing brown with pencils, it's really much more difficult and too easy to just pick up a brown pencil and create whatever you want with the brown. You have to be a little bit careful about what you mix into your browns when you're blending, but it doesn't mean things won't work. And I'm going to talk about one pencil in, between, in, in particular, and that's avocado. Avocado is sort of a golden brown mixed with green and it makes great ground coverage 
You can mix it in with your a little bit of your reds, your earth tones, your French grays. It's really a very versatile pencil that may go overlooked. I've mentioned indigo blue in the past and why indigo blue works. And it's because it's it were always works with red. And now you could see why. Blue is right next to red. And you're getting into from hot to cold your shadow. You're cooling off the heat of the sun on a, like say a face. You go to a blue, which is not in like the black. You never shadow with black. It just looks beautiful. Indigo blue, I can, I almost mix indigo blue into, into every color. It's just one of those things that will tone down everything, even though it's not a gray. It sort of acts like a gray. Blue mixes into gray, fantastic. Blue goes with red on an analogous color model. So it's a perfect choice when it comes to darker shadowing. Another color model that you should be familiar with is monotone or monochromatic. This is where you take one color and use tones and shades of that color. So you add in your blacks, your whites, and your grays into that color, being careful with the gray. What I really love is, do you remember Schindler's List, the movie, where they did a monochromatic uh, film uh, clip, and then they added in the red dress. It made a very, very bold statement, and that's one of my favorite I think I hit upon all the points that I wanted to bring to you today. I will see you in my next video. Soar, and if you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell.